realistic and symbolic images of Ukrainian women depicted in the paintings of modern artists. Masters of the 21st century attracted by the centuries-old traditions of Ukrainian dress. Two artists whose stylized portraits are rediscovering the country's cultural heritage. UATV took a look at the workshops of the two authors in order to unravel the secret of the attractiveness of the Ukrainian female image. Ukrainian Padilya has always been the border region over the northern feeders of the Dniester River. After the fall of Kiev and Rus, these lands passed into different hands many times. The Grand Duchy of Lithuania, Poland and Muscovy, travelers called the Podilia region Ukrainian Italy. At the end of the 18th century, the Russian Empire took over most of Podilia and began to actively colonize it. Here, the land was given to especially loyal nobles and they brought with them their peasants from family estates. Back then, slavery in Russia was legal and up to half of the population were serfs. Serfs and their children were literally the property of the landowner. In 1776, a boy was born in the village of Kukovka to such a relocated Russian family. He showed a talent for drawing from an early age, but his owner was not interested in this, and the young man was sent to St. Petersburg to study as a pastry chef. There, the young man managed to finish a course of the Academy of Arts and impress Russian high society with his works. He created one of the famous portraits of the poet Alexander Pushkin. The implacable master returned his serf home and forced him to serve at the table, and yet the artist still managed to do what he loved. Over the course of two decades, he created many portraits of ordinary Ukrainian villagers, including the girl from Podilia. The name of this painter was Vasil Trapinin, and he got his freedom only at the age of 48. He was always attracted by the images of freedom-loving Ukrainian women in bright folk costumes, and contemporary art in Ukraine owes a great deal to this creativity, which was undesirable in Russia. I paint Ukrainian folk clothes, according to traditions. I try to do this with a love of tradition, of Ukrainian costumes. For myself, I describe my technique, my style, as modern folk. These are some folklore motives, but created in a modern manner. In the 19th century, portraits rarely had any other reading, except for the obvious, and in the 21st, artists who formally paint portraits actually tell stories of Ukrainian culture, symbols, even rituals. These are not portraits of certain people, they are probably just female images. Rather, these are stylized images, not portraits. Ukrainian culture is mystical. All these ceremonies, costumes, embroidery, it's all so exciting. I want to transfer it to the canvas. And next, how did two residents of a megapolis discover their rich Ukrainian ethnos? What's the difference between creative approaches and techniques of the painters? What happens if they paint the same female image? You can see the results of our experiment at the end of this program. There was a tradition in the Middle Ages to mostly paint images of saints, stylized icons. In the 17th century, an artistic revolution took place in the Slavic world. Under the influence of Western Europe, masters of the brush began to depict their contemporaries. Later on, this genre would be called persona, from the distorted Latin word persona, still a stylized but realistic human image. In the Middle Ages, art was always perceived through the prism of religion. The picture was not to depict reality, but using symbolism to inform the viewer of something important, as a rule, moral teaching. New times demanded the closeness of art to life. Parsunas became more realistic until they eventually turned into real portraits, like Vasil Trapinin's. The art of the 20th century brought about a reverse turn to stylization, but on a different level. Anyway, the modern artist must first master the academic foundations. Anna Didenko graduated from the Kyiv Institute of Decorative and Applied Art and began with realistic landscapes, still lives and, of course, portraits, from hetmans to contemporaries. She had the opportunity to restore the images of the Ukrainian dissidents of the Soviet era for an exhibition project. There was a series of portraits of members of the Ukrainian Helsinki group drawn by me. There are 45 paintings in such an academic style. Changes in life also contributed to escaping from realism. When my daughter was born, 
it was already more difficult to work, go somewhere into the open air, to paint a landscape or put a still life to paint. And such a stylized work, at some stage you can stop it and then come to finish, so there is nothing binding you to nature. Where did the unusual female images come from? Almost faceless, but with bright outfits and decorations. Like many artists, Anna does not quite know the answer to this question. I began to study jewelry. I myself created jewelry that was close to ethnic jewelry, but out of modern materials. I went to many exhibitions at the Honchar Museum, talked with reenactors, ethnographers. I managed to get into it somehow. New paintings by Anna Didenko attracted attention immediately. She started getting invited to exhibitions at modern galleries. My curator said that I was probably one of the Ukrainian symbolists. At the present time, few Ukrainian artists worked in the field of symbolism. Perhaps I don't depict a person, but a particular emotional state of him or her. Olha Haidamaka came to the painting from a slightly different angle. She went to art school and from the very beginning sought to find some thematic support for her work. I wanted to find some kind of style of my own, so that people would remember it, so that it would stand out among others. I tried to draw landscapes, some flowers, animals, but it was all wrong. I found myself reproducing Ukrainian clothing. Each region of Ukraine has its own system, a special style of national dress with typical local embroidery designs and colors. The works of Vasil Trepinin helped to study the Podilia system of that time, and all his works are based on the traditions of Chernihiv region. I was born in Kiev, but every summer I stayed with my grandmother in the countryside. And somehow I loved it all so much, all these traditions. These childhood memories are very nice, and I wanted to bring them into my works. Olha was so captured by the diversity of Ukrainian national dress, especially female dress, that after school she went to study not as an artist, but as a fashion designer. Her stylized portraits were created as a result of this influence. I discovered this style to draw a small hat, hands and very large hats and sleeves. So I want to express my admiration for these wedding wreaths. They're so massive, there are so many small elements. I want to portray them as being very large. And embroidery on the sleeves. Olha began to draw for herself and posted pictures on the internet. Then suddenly she was noticed in social networks and offered the chance to arrange a personal exhibition. Not anywhere, but in the House Museum of Taras Shevchenko. She had to work hard. I had only three works. I have never held a personal exhibition. And after that I found my inspiration and I began to draw my series with it. That exhibition was called The Soul of Ukraine, which fits the works of both artists. Anna Didenko and Olha Haidamaka share the secrets of their stylized painting and tell us how all of this done. How it's made Even from the very beginning, portraits were not pure art. The customers always dictated their requirements. Today this genre has been almost completely replaced by photos, but some people, who can afford it, want a painting with their image on it. Anna Didenko accepts such orders, though, from a creative point of view, quite reluctantly. But just when you create of your own free will, you find something interesting, you work on it yourself, you live it yourself, then you enjoy what you've created. Anna says that at first the inspiration for a picture should be accumulated. Sometimes she just has nothing to say on the canvas until the right time comes. The artist does sketches primarily for the sake of the composition of a picture in the future. This is the embossed effect. For it, I use a substrate for painting from acrylic paste. To achieve this effect, we need to take some gaze and prepare the parts that we want to make voluminous. I will make the flowers voluminous in this work. We we'll leave the parts that will appear transparent. The gaze will be seen through them. The effect will become more expressive when we apply oil paint. It can take from several months to several years to draw such a painting. 
Sometimes Anna modifies the canvas with long braids. From a technical point of view, it's important for an artist to make the image airy and impressionistic, so she takes paint without white pigment at the base. Anna loves to apply them using touch with her fingers to create embossed bright spots. I take transparent paints. In their structure, they are like watercolors. They don't have such a pigment that paints completely and shines through them via the canvas. And then I wipe something, I pull it out, then I deepen it. One or two or three colors, then I add more colors. I start with warm ones and finish the work with cold colors. The specifics of the details are important for Olha Haidamaka. Before starting her work, she reviews many old photographs and reconstructions of traditional Ukrainian clothing. I do a lot of sketches in such a way that everything looks harmonious, so that all the objects and characters are in their place. When this sketch is ready, I transfer it to canvas and begin to work in oils. I really like the palette knife for drawing. This tool is similar to that of a spatula. It turns out very embossed, paints do not mix and it seems a bit like modeling. I really like it. That is how, like a sculptor, all her sculpts faces on a canvas, with photographic precision. It's hard to believe that the artist hardly uses brushes. A lot of effort is also devoted to improvisation in her creative process. Lots of new things appear along the line in the process. I see that something does not fit. I need to change something. It so happened that I draw a face for a week, and then I take and wash off everything with a palette knife, remove all the paint and start painting again. Each of Olha's pictures takes one or two months to complete. Some works are bought by lovers of Ukrainian ethnos. Sometimes the artist gives them to people with whom these stylized portraits are painted. I am inspired by many Ukrainian famous personalities, especially singers. My husband and I went to a concert of the band Vivian Mort, and I painted a work specially for this concert, so as to present it to the singer. She definitely liked it. In order to clearly show the similarities and differences in the manners of the two artists, we invited Anna Didenko and Olha Haidamaka to the Municipal Art Gallery in Kiev. Here they will try to transfer to Pastel the image of our colleague dressed in ethnic Ukrainian clothes. One nature to interpretations. In the space of just 90 minutes, we get two stylized portraits. Olha's color sketch shows details of the costume and headdress. Anna's work is dominated by color spots, which would have looked richer and deeper in oil. Anyway, both masters prove that their works belong to contemporary art and can adorn not just ethnographic museums. They look nice in any interiors. It doesn't have to be some kind of hut with such an authentic interior. I already have collectors whose apartments are fully decorated with my works. I was even invited to see how my paintings look in domestic interiors. The works of Anna Didenko were exhibited at the US Embassy in Ukraine in 2018 as an example of contemporary national art. Olha Haidamaka is working on a large-scale series of paintings with costumes and rituals from residents of various regions of Ukraine, and she's certain it will be interesting for contemporaries to see it. 
I will try to move in a difficult direction, depict complex emotions, events of a certain kind, ceremonies, where more actors will be involved. People want to somehow get back to their roots. After all, without history, there is no future.